So this is the story of a PCF8563. It's a real-time clock, and uh, in my case it arrived as a SOP8 version, but um, there is a DIP8 version. It's very cheap and cheerful. It has a lot of different um, interesting properties which you're going to explore. And um, after soldering it up onto the adapter, um, the next thing to do was to connect it up to an Arduino Nano and uh, try and use it as an actual clock. Alright, so uh, this is an interesting circuit, this one. Um, so there's been some issues with it and I'm not entirely happy with the internet as a result of a couple of hardware issues and certainly there have been some software issues as well. But let me just go through the circuit and I'll talk about those issues as we come to it. So initially I've started with an Arduino Nano. I'm going to swap this out for an Atmega 328 at some stage because the Nano consumes a bit more power than what I'd like, but it's a nice test bed. So um, it's, got, it's got code in it which firstly is able to set the RTC uh, and that's a PCF8563, uh, one of these low current RTCs which, um, which show a lot of promise, have a lot of functionality, don't consume much power, so that's, uh, that's a good combination. So the code sets it uh, according, to the current, uh, according to the current time. So whatever time that the code is compiled, then this is set to. And, um, and then there's also some code which is currently loaded up, which just uh, reads it. So when the Nano starts up, it doesn't attempt to set this. It just um, reads whatever time it is and displays it to the OLED. So some new things for me. Well, firstly, the idea of using the RTC. So I've, I've used modules before. Um, and they've worked quite successfully. They're um, based on various you know, different types of RTC uh, and they've been fine. But I've just wanted to explore the idea of having this, this chip by itself and, and just playing around with the bare minimum. So according to the hardware um, guidelines that I'd seen on lots of different websites, uh, there's my oscillator. So it's the sort of watch crystal that you get around 32 kilohertz. Uh, and in most of the circuit diagrams that I'd seen, uh, including uh, ones that I've linked on the blog, um, there's no capacitor. So, and you know, my dealings with uh, these sorts of crystals before, or similar crystals, has been that you always need these capacitors to, uh, to get this oscillation going. Uh, so I was able to talk to the RTC, I was able to recognize it, I was able to program the time and read it back again, but it wasn't ticking very frustrating and I thought of course it's got to be the crystals fault or of course it's got to be the RTC's fault so after swapping everything out I finally it finally dawned on me you know that I should put a little capacitor in so I did I've only got the one and I'm not sure if I should have one on the other side of the oscillator as well but this is a little 20 picofarad um, capacitor and uh, lo and behold the RTC started oscillating to give me time uh, the another interesting hardware issue is that you've got these two um, pull-up resistors. Th these are 10Ks. These are on the SDA and SCL I squared C lines. So I'd never before uh, daisy chained devices. So you can see those two lines going out to the RTC, and then daisy chained onto that are these other two loopy ones, which goes to another I squared uh, C device, which is the OLED display. Um, while I think of it, I mean, one really good piece of code that you can put on here before you start, so you wire it all up and you put on the I squared C scanner, and that'll tell you the address of your devices, which you know you need you need when you're coding it into your Nano. So, but on some diagrams, you know that I've looked at, these are uh, 4.7k resistors. Uh, that these ones are 10, which I've seen, and I've seen others where uh, you know they're not used at all, and some of the sites that I've seen that deal specifically with this PCF8563 say that they are not needed because of pull-up resistors inside here. I'm not really sure, but I do know the first time I got this to work, these were in place, and so they are staying in place. Uh, what else have we got? Well, we've got a coin cell battery here, uh, and it's got a, a diode in this arm. You can't really see it there. That's, I think, a 1N4148. Uh, and there's another one just, can we see it? It's a bit hard to see. I'll just get this out of the way. Here it is there. So you can see it on the side there. Let me just shift this. Yeah, there we go. That guy there. Okay, so that's so there's one diode feeding the power into the RTC uh, from the power rail and another one feeding in from the coin cell. 
So the idea is if the power goes out, then uh, the coin cell takes over feeding the RTC, but that power doesn't get back through that diode to the main rail, so the Arduino Nano won't uh, uh, snaffle up any of that power. And vice versa, in this current uh, phase where the power is being provided by this 5 volts here to the main rail, uh, that doesn't feed back uh, into uh, our coin cell battery, so it's all operating terrifically. Uh, last is our interruption. So this thing here is sleeping at the moment and we interrupt it. Now I've got a, a button here which isn't debounced, so it's quite sensitive. So I go somewhere near it and there it goes. Uh, it comes up with uh, one circuit clock and the current date and the current time for five seconds. Now you might have also noticed a little LED go on here and all that's doing really is it's, um, it, I've used that in debugging and I haven't removed it. So I find putting LEDs here and there to find out what part of the code I'm in and what it's doing to be you know, a very useful programming technique with the Arduino. So that guy's still sitting there because he's done such great work. So what happens uh, when the power goes out? So if I pull out the five volts, actually I'll just switch it off here. Let's just switch off the five volts. There it goes. You'll notice that the uh, the light on the Arduino Nano goes out. Before I put those diodes in, this was going on weekly. This thing was really struggling, just all from the coin cell, which is 3.3 volts on a good day. So um, that's why that that uh, diode is in the background there. There it is. I can see it a bit more clearly. That guy there to stop this power, which is now just feeding the RTC, going to your main rail. So then we'll put the power back on, what should happen in the startup cycle is it'll just say one circuit clock, it'll figure out in the, on the RTC, you know, what's going on, a little bit of settle down time, and then it'll go back into sleeping and waiting for this button to be pushed. So let's try that. So there it just says one circuit clock. There's no time or date at this stage. <laughs> and there it is because this is a non d bounce button. Isn't that great? Oh, that's annoying. I'll try that again. Take that out. Put that back in, try not to breathe on it this time. All hands off. Unless I've programmed in to do one cycle first, but I didn't think I had. No, that seems to be sleeping nicely. All right, so I'll put my finger somewhere near it. And there we go, yep. So that's the circuit working. It's um, It was a little bit of work to get it going, but I think this has got great potential. I really like the idea. I'm gonna, just gonna um, swap this out for a Atmega 328P, and then I'll do some uh, current measurements and see what sort of power it's drawing. But yeah, a lot of work, but a lot of fun as well. Okay, so the, uh, the Nano has gone. And uh, here we have just the raw Atmega 328 chip. So a couple of things have swapped around. My LED, well, the, the, they're actually still the same. It's just that, of course, the pins are different. So uh, A5 and A4 over here on the uh, Atmega 328. Uh, and then we've got power coming in and uh, we've got our LED. And that uh, red one here, that's the long snaking interrupt to uh, pin two. So let's see if that works. Yeah, that's still kicking along pretty well. And it's held the time uh, while I've been doing this too. So, um, you know, it's about, what is it, half an hour after uh, we were looking at it last time. So that's fine. Everything seems to be it seems to be working well. One of the things I am interested in is uh, how much current is it drawing now that we've got this chip in here sleeping away quite merrily. So um, let's hook up the uh, multimeter to that and see if we can't find out what the current draw is. So let's have a look at the current draw with this connected. So there we are around 17 milliamps and then everyone goes to sleep. So that's around two milliamps. Activate that, we've got the LED on and the OLED on around 30 milliamps and then back to sleep. I'm sure if I do things like enable the internal pull-ups on the unused pins and a couple of other things in terms of optimization, we can probably drop that well below one milliamp. But for the moment, that's not too bad. I'm pretty happy with that. See you next time. And as usual, if you want to check out the code, have a look at the link to the blog below.